What's up guys? Moving on with adding and subtracting rational expressions, starting with number one, we got 2x plus 1 over x minus y plus 5x squared plus 5xy over x squared minus y squared. So as we did in the previous examples, three steps. We got a factor, state restrictions, and then we have to simplify. So starting here with number one, notice 2x plus 1 over x minus y, that can't be factored any further. But notice here, this second rational expression, we can factor both the numerator and the denominator. So if we factor the numerator, we could take out a 5x from both uh, terms, so we'd be left with x plus y. And then x squared minus y squared, that's just a difference of squares. So we'll have x plus y over x minus y. So everything is factored, and then at this point we could state what the restrictions are. So basically, when would the denominator be zero? So notice that x minus y cannot equal zero, which means x cannot equal positive y, and then x plus y cannot equal zero, which means x cannot equal negative y. So x cannot equal plus or minus y. Those are the two restrictions. Then this factor here, x minus y, same as this one. So we already took care of that. So now we could simplify. Now, usually what we're doing, we're getting a common denominator. So notice in this case, the lowest common denominator between these two, this one doesn't contain this factor x plus y. So we can multiply this by x plus y, and then we can multiply the top by x plus y. However, notice that x plus y and x plus y is both in the numerator and denominator for this second rational expression. So instead of doing this, what we can actually do is we could simplify this rational expression. And sometimes that's going to happen. You want to be on the lookout for that, where you can actually simplify the rational, one of the rational expressions that you're either adding or subtracting and it makes things a lot more easy. Because now that those x plus y's went away, all we're left with is 5x over x minus y. I'm kind of erasing it. You may want to write it on the next line. I'm just erasing it to save some room. So we're left with that. And now notice that both of these are common denominators after those x plus y's went away. So now we can just add these, 2x plus 1 plus 5x, so we'll have 2x plus 1 plus 5x, and this is going to be all over x minus y. So adding the like terms, you end up with 7x plus 1 over x minus y. So that's your final answer, and those are your restrictions. All right? so it's a lot easier. If you were to get that common denominator, before, so if you didn't cancel out the x plus y's and you just kept the x plus y here uh, and then multiply the top by x plus y, you'd have to expand everything. And then once you get to here, the numerator would be able to factor and then the x plus y's would cancel out and you would end up with this here. But that way is a lot more work. It's easier to just uh, cancel out the x plus y's initially. So always be on the lookout after you factor in the first step can stuff cancel out in one of the rational expressions, right? And if it can, cancel it out and it makes everything a lot easier. But anyway, this is your final answer and those are your restrictions. Moving on to number two. Notice that uh, we're dealing with three rational expressions here, but same thing happens. First step, you wanna factor everything. So we'd have three X plus one, over x minus 1, can't factor anything there. Then we'd have x minus 1 over x minus 3, can't factor anything there. And then we got x plus 1. And then over here, x squared minus 4x plus 3, that factors into x minus 1, x minus 3. All right, and now what you want to do is since we factored everything, Nothing really cancels out here, so we can state the restriction. So notice x minus 1 cannot equal 0, so that means x cannot equal positive 1. 
and then x minus 3 can't equal 0, which means x cannot equal positive 3. And now that we have the restrictions, let's start simplifying. So we got x minus 1, x minus 3. These are different factors. But then we have x minus 1 times x minus 3. So notice that the lowest common denominator overall is going to be what? It's going to be x minus 1 times x minus 3. Basically, remember when you have two different factors, the lowest common denominator is going to be them multiplied by each other. And over here, they're already multiplied by each other. So this x minus 1, to get to this lowest common denominator, we have to multiply it by what? x minus 3, meaning that the top, we're going to have to multiply it by x minus 3. You want to make sure you put that factor in the numerator in brackets. So that in brackets multiplied by x minus 3 in brackets. Then this x minus 3, to get to here, we're going to multiply it by x minus 1. So we multiply this numerator by x minus 1. Right, so if we rewrite this, basically, it's going to look like this. x minus 1 times x minus 1, that's the same as x minus 1 squared, but I'll just write it out fully. And then over here, this is already as this denominator, so we would just write that plus x plus 1, like that. Now, if this was a minus, you got to be careful because this would be minus, and then this whole thing would have to go in brackets. So you'd be subtracting that whole term, all right? But since it's a positive, we don't have to put that bracket there, but we could still even just keep the bracket just for you to see it clearly that we're subtracting that whole numerator. But if that was a negative, then it would be critical for that to be in brackets. And then from here, uh, what you wanna do is you just wanna FOIL everything out and then uh, simplify, collect all the like terms. So if I FOIL all of this out, I'll have, um, let's write this here. So x minus one, x minus three. So this would be three x squared minus nine x plus x minus three. All right, if we FOIL everything out over here and then we'll have minus x plus one, or no, sorry. I didn't see that these two are multiplying. So this would be a minus, and then in brackets, if we expand these two, if we FOIL them out, we end up with x squared minus two x plus one when we simplify the FOILing. So when we simplify those two middle terms, the minus x minus x, it'll be negative two x. And then this is just simply plus x plus one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to distribute the negative in this line. You may want to write it in the next line, but uh, I'm just trying to save some room here. So this would be minus x squared. This would be plus 2x, and then this would end up being minus 1. Okay, so now we can collect all the like terms. So we got uh, 3x squared minus x squared, that would give us a 2x, let's write it over here. That'd be 2x squared. And then we'd have negative 9x plus x, that gives us negative 8x, um, plus 2x, that gives us negative 6x, plus x gives us a negative 5x. And then we got negative 3 minus 1, which is negative 4 plus one, which is um, minus three. And this is all over x minus one times x minus three. Now, if you remember, you wanna be careful, you can't leave it like this. Once it's simplified, you always wanna check if you could factor that numerator. And in this case, you actually can factor that numerator. That numerator is gonna factor into two x plus one times x minus 3 once you do decomposition on it. This is what uh, you would get if you factor that numerator. And notice what happens. These x minus 3s 
cancel out. And after they cancel out, this simplifies further to 2x plus 1 over x minus 1, like that. Right, so once you get to this step, it's not over. You have to factor the simplified numerator and see if anything cancels out. A lot of times stuff won't cancel out, but in this case, notice the x minus threes cancel out and it simplifies the two x plus one over x minus one. And notice how much more simplified this answer is than this answer, right? So this is the first example that we've done where the factoring at the end allows you to cancel something and simplify. So that's an example of why you have to factor that simplified numerator again. All right, so I thought I would go over these two examples, but um, yeah, they're just different cases. Here in this case, we were able to simplify this rational expression before simplifying uh, adding both. And then over here, after we got um, the lowest common denominator, after we simplified, you were able to factor the numerator and then that simplified further. So just be on the lookout for these types of questions.